Hello everyone and welcome to another book haul for September. I ended up with quite a few more books. So let's go ahead and just dive right on in so I can give you the synopsis and all of that. So this first one came in, I resubscribed to Once Upon a Book Club and I did not film any sort of unboxing for the September box. So uh, this one did not come in the September box. This was in a special order box. So I'm gonna start filming unboxings for those come like the October boxes. So this one was in um, with one of the special edition books that I got, which is in the stack behind this first stack. But this is an extra book that came in the box. I always love it when there's a bonus book in the Once Upon a Book Club. This is the first in a series. I'm not sure what the name of the series is. This is a historical romance and it's Dangerous the Outcasts. This is written by Minerva Spencer. So there's the book. It says, Lady Euphema Marlington hasn't been free in 17 years since she was captured by corsairs and sold into a harem. Now the Sultan is dead and Mia is back in London lacing, uh, facing relentless newspapermen, an insatiably curious public and her first season. Worst of all is her ashamed father's ultimatum, marry a man of his choosing or live out her life in seclusion. No doubt her potential groom is a demented octogar oct octogenarian, octogenarian. Mm. Fortunately, Mia is no longer a girl, but a clever woman with a secret, a plan of her own. Adam de Courtney's first two wives died under mysterious circumstances. Now there isn't a peer in England willing to let his daughter marry the dangerously handsome man uh, the ton calls the murderous Marquess. Nobody except Mia's father, the desperate Duke of Carlisle. Clearly Mia must resemble an aging matron or worse. However, in need of an heir, Adam will use the arrangement to his advantage. But when the two outcasts finally meet, assumptions will be replaced by surprises, deceit by, uh, deceit by desire, and a meeting of minds between two schemers that uh, between two schemers may lead to a meeting of hearts if the secrets if the secrets of their past don't tear them apart. Oh man, that was hard, difficult to um, read. <laughs> Let's go ahead and get in. Now these next three books are all by the same author and it's, these are all part of a trilogy. So I'll read you the first one and the synopsis for that because I believe these follow the same characters. So I'm only going to read you the synopsis of the first one and that is the Fear Park trilogy by R.L. Stein. So we have the first screen. Oh. Okay. First screen. The loudest screen. And then the last scream. I have read these before and enjoyed them. So when I finally get to these, it'll be a reread. So the and then I had a wine voucher card fall out, but I don't drink wine. So that's going away. Okay. The first scream, I'll read you the synopsis of this one. It says, get your tickets for terror. Would you open an amusement park on Fear Street? Would you take the risk and go against the ancient curse of the Fear family? Deidre Br Bradley's father would. He is opening Fear Park in a few days, but he doesn't know someone or something will do anything to stop him. Soon the screams of joy will turn into screams of terror, and Deidre will be caught in a nightmare ride that never ends. So that's the first scream. Not reading the synopsis of the other two because they still follow Deidre and I don't want to spoil anything. So, those are my Fear Street books. Alright, now this one was in the September box for Once Upon a Book Club and that is Scenes of the Crime by Jilly Gagnon. And the hint for September was Agatha Christie. So this is going to be a mystery and I'm guessing it's compared to Agatha Christie type book. It says, I should have been the perfect, it should have been the perfect spring break. 
five girlfriends, a remote winery on the Oregon coast, an infinite supply of delicious wine at their manicured fingertips. But then their center, beautiful, magnetic Vanessa Morales, vanished without a trace. Emily Fisher was perhaps the last person to see Vanessa alive. But now, years later, Emily spots her friend's doppelganger at a local cafe. At the end of her rope, working a lucrative yet mind-numbing gig on a network sitcom, Emily is inspired to finally tell the story that's been percolating inside her for so long, Vanessa's story. But first, she needs to know what really happened on that fateful night. So she puts a brilliant scheme into motion. Under the guise of reconnecting, Emily gets the girls together for a reunion weekend at the scene of the crime. There's Brittany, Vanessa's cousin and the inheritor of the winery. Paige, a former athlete, bullish yet easily manipulated. And Lydia, the wallflower of the group. That would be me. I would be the wallflower. <laughs> One of them knows the truth, but what have they each been hiding? And how much can Emily trust anything she learns from them? or even her own memories of Vanessa's last days. So there you go. Sounds pretty good to me. Okay. Um, I'm going to skip down to this next, skip the top one. This also came, this was a bonus book in the September box. So there was a special order one that I got, which I gave, it was that first book I held up and that was an extra book in this special order box. And this was an extra book in the September box, so I got two bonus books this month, so I'm happy about that. So the bonus book in the September Once Upon a Book Club is The Future of Another Timeline by Anna Lee Newitz. And then nothing under the dust, dust jacket, but pretty sky blue and pages. Okay, now this is told in a dual timeline. So we have 1992. So I was eight going on nine. A confrontation at a riot girl, G-R-R-L is how it's spelled, and I remember that. <laughs> I, I, I remember seeing things like that. Okay, after a confrontation at a riot girl concert, 17-year-old Beth finds herself in a car with her friend's abusive boyfriend dead in the back seat, agreeing to help her friends hide the body. This murder sets Beth and her friends on a path of escalating violence and vengeance as they realize many other young women in the world need protecting too. So that's 1992. Now we're in 2022. Determined to use time travel to create a safer future, Tess has dedicated her life to visiting key moments in history and fighting for change. But rewriting the timeline isn't as simple as editing one person or event. And just when Tess believes she's found a way to make an edit that actually sticks, she encounters a group of dangerous travelers bent on stopping her at any cost. Tess and Beth's lives intertwine as war breaks out across the timeline, a war that threatens to destroy time travel and leave only a small group of elites with the power to shape the past, present, and future. Against the vast and intricate forces of history and humanity, is it possible for a single person's actions to echo throughout the timeline? So if you like time travel books, this might be one to look into. Okay, so next up is a romance. And I finally caved and got Spoiler Alert by Olivia Dade. It says, and this is number one in a series, and I think the series is the same title, which is spoiler alert. Marcus Castor Rupp has a secret. The world may know him as Aeneas, star of the biggest show on television, but fan fiction readers call him something else. Book Aeneas would never. Marcus releases his frustrations with the show by writing and posting anonymous stories about the internet's favorite couple. Aeneas and Lavina. And I'm sure I'm saying his name wrong in this, or the character's name. I'm just guessing. I have no idea. But if anyone were to discover his online persona, he would be finished in Hollywood. April Whittier has secrets of her own, a hardcore Lavinia fan. She's long hidden her fanfic and cosplay hobbies from her real life, but not anymore. When she dares to post her latest costume creation on Twitter, her plus-size take goes viral. 
and when Marcus asks her out to spite her internal critics, uh, oh, her internet critics, I'm sure she probably has some internal, but internet critics, uh, truth officially becomes stranger than fan fiction. On their date, Marcus quickly realizes he wants more from April than a one-time publicity stunt. But when he discovers she's unapologetic uh, Lavina Stan, he closes fandom, his closest fandom friend, he has one more huge secret to keep from her. With love and Marcus's career on the line, can Marcus and April stop hiding once and for all? Or will a match made in fandom end up permanently cancelled? It does sound good, and I've heard some good things about it. Uh, so I finally was like, let's do it. Okay, this next one my mom gave me. This is one that my mom got, and she is just not feeling it anymore, but she does think I'll like it because of how it sounds. But she's just no longer interested in this, so she did give me the book. And that is Dust and Grim by Chuck Wendig. Wendig. Not sure. And this is in middle grade. 13-year-old Molly doesn't know how she got the, the short end of the stick. Being raised by her neglectful father, while Dustin, the older brother she's never met, got their mother and the keys to the family estate. But now the siblings are both orphaned. Molly's come home for her inheritance, and if Dustin won't welcome her into the family business, then she'll happily take her half in cash. There's just one problem. The fam family business is a mortuary for monsters. It's going to take all of Dustin's stuffy supernatural knowledge and Molly's most heroic cosplay, plus a little help from non-human friends, for the siblings to save the day, if only they can get along for five minutes. So, Dust and Grim. And that does sound really cute. This next one was a pre-order. And I am going to be collecting everything from this author. And this book is called The Novelist from Berlin by V.S. Alexander. This is a historical fiction. This one says, 1920s Germany. Through the world, though the world has changed in the wake of the Great War, it is still ruled by men. Even a woman as resourceful and intelligent as Nikki Rittenhouse needs alliances in order to survive. Her marriage to Ricard Lang Langer, a movie producer for Berlin's Passport Pictures, seems convenient for them both. When Rickard succumbs to increasing pressure from the Nazis to make propaganda movies, a horrified Nikki turns away from her own film aspirations and instead begins to write. Nikki's first novel, The Berlin Woman, is published under a pseudonym to great success, but Nikki knows she cannot stay anonymous for long. The Nazis are cementing their power over Germany and over her husband. Though she succeeds in escaping Rickard, he directs Hitler's brown shirts to do the unthinkable. Kidnap their daughter. Oh. With her books blacklisted, her life in danger, and Europe descending into war, Nikki travels to Amsterdam, joins the Dutch resistance, and then returns to war-torn Berlin, determined to claim freedom for herself and her child, and to write her own story at last. I like books about writers, so I'm excited for that one. Okay, I'm going to move this stack in front of me. So this next one, um, I don't really have anything to say. It was just kind of a, the cover intrigued me, and there's really not much on the cover. And this is Consider Me by Becca Mack. Uh, this does have a number one on the spine. So this is part of a series, and I don't know how long it is, if it's a trilogy or what it is. Let's see. Carter Beckett is the NHL's resident bad boy, top player both on the ice and in the bedroom, and quite possibly the sexiest man to ever grace my field of vision. But worst of all, he knows it. He's arrogant, self-centered, and the man doesn't seem to know what a filter is, let alone how to use one. He's had everything served to him on a silver platter, including endless strings of women, and apparently I'm up next. His only problem? I have no intention of falling for his shit, um, charm. <laughs> I have the solution to all my sexual frustrations in a drawer at home, and it's far less complicated than Carter Beckett. Sure, he may be pretty, but he's also a walking, talking reminder for you to wrap it up before you tap it. 
But then I start letting my guard down, and he starts showing me pieces of himself I had no intention of seeing. The bricks surrounding me may be tumbling down one by one, but I'm not sold yet, which means for the first time in his life, Carter's the one begging for my time, my trust, for a single chance, for me to just consider him. This sounds like it's going to be very steamy. So, <laughs> but it sounds really good. Okay, this next one I have is Haunting Adeline by H.D. Carlton, complete cover by. I love how dark the cover is. I love the skeleton and the black moth butterfly, whatever it is down there. There's a cobweb and a spider in it. Uh, there's another cobweb up here. I just love this cover. This one, yeah, complete cover by. And then there's some red roses kind of throughout, or red flowers, but like right here's one. Anyway, it says the manipulator. I can manipulate the emotions of anyone who lets me. I will make you hurt, make you cry, make you laugh and sigh. But my words don't affect him, especially not when I plead for him to leave. He's always there, watching and waiting, and I can never look away, not when I want him to come closer. And when I looked this up on Goodreads, I believe this is a, this was in the romance section, but I think this is a paranormal romance. The Shadow. I didn't mean to fall in love, but now that I have, I can't stay away. I'm mesmerized by her smile, by her eyes, and the way she moves, the way she undresses. I'll keep watching and waiting until I can make her mine. And once she is, I'll never let her go. Not even when she begs me to. Yeah, that sounds pretty good. Um, okay, there's an important... Oh, there's a playlist. I love it when authors do a playlist. Okay, so there is a playlist. I'm happy about that. Now, there is an important note, so I'm going to read the note to you. None of these conspiracies derive from a belief in anti-Semitism or QAnon, but from my own demented imagination, common conspiracies in the media, and in many occult horror movies my dad used to watch growing up. So it sounds like there's going to be anti-Semitism in this book. This book ends on a cliffhanger. The contents are very dark, with triggering situations such as non-dub con, between the main characters, graphic violence, human trafficking, stalking, child trafficking, child sacrifices, mentions of child death, and explicit sexual situations. There are also particular kinks, such as gunplay, uh, somnophilia, I don't know what that is, bondage, and degradation. This book was previously taken down due to the warning, but you can also find them in reviews on my website or feel free to message me directly. Your mental health matters. So that's a note directly from the author. So this is going to be very, very dark. So definitely proceed with caution. Okay, next up, this was part, where's the second one? Oh, here we go. We'll do these next two because they kind of go together because of the table that were, they were on. I went to Barnes & Noble because I wanted to look at some books for my mom for Christmas. So, and then I saw these and I thought, were they on the buy one, get one half off table? Well, let's go ahead and do it. So the first one that I got is Borrow My Heart by Casey West. Very short book. And I like the cover because of all the animals and she's holding a black cat. So absolutely, I got that one. Mostly because of the black cat. When Ren... Ren W-R-E-N, so the character's name is Ren. Ren rescues dogs. She's never rescued a boy before. Ren is used to being called a control freak. She doesn't care. Sticking to the list of rules she created for herself helps her navigate life. But when a cute boy named Asher walks through the door of her neighborhood coffee shop, the rule book goes out the window. Asher is cute and charming, and he's being catfished by his online crush. So Ren makes an uncharacteristically impulsive decision. She pretends to be the girl he's waiting for to save him from embarrassment. Suddenly, she's fake dating a boy she knows nothing about, and it's amazing. It's not long before Asher has her breaking even more of her own rules. But will he forgive her when he finds out she's not who she says she is? Ren's not so sure. After all, rules exist for a reason. I need to get this sticker off. Let me see if I can get it off. The last couple of books that I got that were on this table were thankfully, oh, and I'm bending the cover, oh well. Okay, uh, easy, 
easily removable as is this one no sticky residue so I've got the sticker off okay this next one that was on the table is my fault by Mercedes Ron really like this cover this is like a velvety smooth one mm. how did I fall easy he turned my world upside down I didn't want warmth I wanted fire 17 year old Noah Morgan lives a quiet normal life with her mother in Toronto until her mother meets and marries William Light Lester Lestier I don't know a wealthy and enigmatic lawyer from California Noah finds himself moving to L.A., leaving her volleyball team, her best friend, and her boyfriend behind. Upon arriving in her new life of private schools and pool parties, she meets her new brother, Nicholas, a college student and seemingly the typical spoiled rich kid. Noah has no desire to get along with him, especially when she discovers Nick's secret of clandestine car racing and street fights. Not to mention, Noah has her own demons on her uh, tail and doesn't want Nick's nose in any of them. But what the two don't account for is a powerful physical attraction between them, enough to turn their world upside down. Can love conquer the dark side of these LA streets, or will Nick and Noah be swallowed by the dark things between them? So a step-sibling relation, love relationship. And this one's a young adult, from, I'm guessing, because it says... YA or where she's 17. All right, got the sticker off. And is this another one that's going to have, I'm hoping, a playlist? Let's see. Not in the front. Let's check the back. Doesn't look like it. No. Nope. And that's okay. All right. This next one is a mystery, and it is, and I really like the cover, They Drown Our Daughters by Katerina Monroe. I really like the cover, and I love the back. So, if you can hear the call of the water, it's already far too late. They say Cape Disappointment is haunted. That's why tourists used to flock there in droves. They'd visit the rocky shoreline under the old lighthouse's watchful eye and fish shells from the water as they pretended to spot dark shapes in the surf. Now the tourists are long gone, and when Meredith stand or oh, and when Meredith Strand and her young daughter return to Meredith's childhood home after an acrimonious split from her wife, the cape seems more haunted by regret than any malevolent force. Okay, so we already have um, we know. Uh, we have LGBT rep in this. But her mother, suffering from early stages of Alzheimer's, is convinced the ghost stories are real. Not only is there something in the water, but, but it's watching them, waiting for them, reaching out to Meredith's daughter the way it has to every woman in their line for generations. And if Meredith isn't careful, all three women, bound by blood and heartbreak, will be lost one by one to the ocean's mournful call. It says this is part modern gothic, part ghost story. It explores the depths of motherhood, identity, and the lengths a woman will go to hold on to both. Okay, these next two are both romances. Um, one's definitely an adult, and one, I think, is a YA. So let's go ahead and go with the adult one. And I just want to see... Ha! Ah, there's a playlist! I am excited! So there's a little bit. Anyway, so, yes, I love that. Okay, so this one is Dare You to Hate Me. This is book number one in the Linden You series. Uh, characters are Aiden and Ivy, and this was written by B. Celeste. And I am just now realizing that's a football player. <laughs> I, the way I looked at it, I was thinking there was a man looking down at a woman. I didn't look pay much attention to the cover. Like, I thought he was dipping her to kiss her. But no, it's a football player. <laughs> Okay, I dare you to hate me, Ivy, because we both know you don't. You couldn't even if you tried. When Ivy Underwood asked her best friend to run away with her at 16, she knew he had to say no. He, she knew he would say no. She had nothing, but he had football, a picture-perfect family, and a loving home to go back to every day. 
So then I, Ivy, snuck out of his bedroom window after hugging him goodbye. She accepted she'd probably never see him again until they both wound up at Linden University four years later. Ivy is barely picking up the pieces of her shattered life after years on the run when he approaches her at work. Aiden Griffith, Linden U's star, star tight end. The boy whose initials she used to doodle hearts around. He's still as attractive, still as dedicated, and still has a place in his heart for Ivy, no matter how hard she tries to push him away. But when rumors emerge that Aiden is being drafted to the NFL, Ivy knows it's only a matter of time before they have to say goodbye again. At the same time, he can't seem to let her go, no matter what she says, and deep down, she doesn't think she wants him to. So, new adult. It was in the adult section, but at, like Barnes & Noble, they don't differentiate between adult and new adult, which I'm grateful for. I don't really care, but I'm saying it's new adult because I know that it matters to some people. Um, so, these are definitely going to be on the younger end, so shortly after uh, high school. Okay, now this next one I think is a YA, and the cashier that was checking me out said she really enjoyed this story, and she says she was bawling by like page five or chapter two, one of the two. I don't remember exactly what she said, but she was crying really early on. Um, this does have exclusive bonus material, so let me see what is the bonus. Okay, so there's a bonus scene. And then there's a prologue for the next book in the series. And chapter one for the next book in the series. And there's a playlist at the back of the book. There's like three different playlists, so very cool. Okay. And this book is called A Thousand Boy Kisses by Tilly Cole. This one says, He kissed me until there was no part of me that didn't know who it belonged to. He kissed me until my heart again fused with his. Two halves of one whole. One kiss lasts a moment, but a thousand kisses can last a lifetime. One boy, one girl. A bond that is forged in an instant and cherished for a decade. A bond that neither time nor distance can break. A bond that will last forever, or so they believe. When 17-year-old Rune Christensen returns from his native Norway to the sleepy town of Blossom Grove, Georgia, where he befriended Poppy Litchfield as a child, he has one thing on his mind. Why did the girl who was one half of his soul, who promised to wait faithfully for his return, cut him off without a word of explanation? Rune's heart was broken two years ago when Poppy fell silent. But when he discovers the truth of her absence, he finds that the greatest heartache is yet to come. All right, let's continue on. This next one I have is A Castaway in Cornwall by Julie Clausen. This says... Set adrift on the tides of fate by the deaths of her parents and left wanting answers, Laura Calloway now lives with her uncle and his disapproving wife in North Cornwall. There she feels like a castaway, always viewed as an outsider even as she yearns to belong. While wreckers search for valuables along the windswept Cornwall coast, known for its many shipwrecks but few survivors, Laura searches for clues to the lives lost so she can write letters to next of kin and return keepsakes to rightful owners. When a man is washed ashore after a wreck, Laura acts quickly to protect him from a local smuggler determined to destroy him. As Laura and a neighbor care for the survivor, they discover he has curious wounds and, although he speaks in careful, educated English, his accent seems odd. Other clues wash ashore, and Laura soon realizes he is not who he seems to be. Despite the evidence against him, the mysterious man might provide her only chance to discover the truth about her parents' fate. With, dangers, with danger pursuing them from every side and an unexpected attraction growing between them, will Laura ever find the answers she seeks? Yeah. Okay, this next one is a war historical fiction. And if I remember right, I think this one is World War II. I'll find out when I read the book, but total cover drew me in beautiful cover and this is in times of rain and war by cameron wright love the cover and the pop of yellow in her dress and the yellow here 
that it's raining. You have the planes overhead. I love this cover. Um, nothing under the dust jacket, which is fine. Okay. The synopsis reads, in September of 1940, during the Blitz in London, Audrey Stocking is blending in with, her, with other civilians who are trying to survive the nightly bombings, but she has a secret. She's not British. She's German. Her fake passport and nearly perfect English allow her to blend in as she works hard to help evacuate British children into the countryside. Audrey longs to reunite with her family in Germany. But her double life, the bombings, and the watchful British military intelligence have forced her to stay put. And then there are the paralyzing nightmares. Lieutenant Wesley Bowen Bowers is an American soldier training with London's Bomb Disposal Company 5, meets Audrey when an air raid leaves an unexploded bomb on the floor of her flat. She is attractive, intelligent, and compassionate, and there's an immediate connection between them. As they get to know each other, Wesley realizes Audrey is the one bright spot amid the war's unending bleakness and constant threat of death. But will he still face, feel the same if he discovers the secrets she is hiding? Secrets even Audrey is unaware of. It says this is a gripping and heartbreakingly beautiful story about the strength and resilience of the human heart and spirit, reminding us there is always hope in hard times. Yeah. Okay, now this next one I got because I think this one is signed by the author. Yes, this is a signed edition. I've already taken the sticker off stating that it is a signed copy. But this is signed by the author. And then this was the clenching, the, the part that determined that I was absolutely gonna get this. And it's this line, based on true events. So, not only is it historical fiction, but it is definitely, I mean, it's still fictionalized and that's historical fiction based on true events and all that. But I do like that it says based on true events. And this one is called The Paper Daughters of Chinatown by Heather B. Moore. And this sounds like it is going to be a difficult, heartbreaking read. In the late 19th century, San Francisco is a blooming city with a dark side, one in which a powerful underground organization, the Criminal Tong, buys and sells young Chinese women into prostitution and slavery. These paper daughters, so-called because fake documents gain them entry into America but leave them without legal identity, generally have no recourse. But the Occidental Mission Home for Girls is one bright spot of hope and help. Told in alternating chapters, this rich narrative follows the stories of young uh, Donaldina Cameron, who works in the mission home, and Mylene, a paper daughter, who thinks she is coming to America for an arranged marriage, but instead is sold into a life of shame and despair. Donalinda is real, uh, Donalinda, a real life pioneering advocate for social justice, bravely stands up to corrupt officials and violent gangs, helping to win freedom for thousands of Chinese women. Maylene, May, I'm sure I said that wrong, uh, endures heartbreak and betrayal in her search for hope, belonging, and love. Their stories merge in this gripping account of the courage and determination that helped shape a new course of women's history in America. Yep. This sounds like it's going to be a difficult, heartbreaking type of a read. Okay, next up I have another romance, and this is Flawless by Elise Silver. I just don't like how close this is. It looks like it's cut off there. Um, it's not. I mean, a little bit of the W is, and I guess part of the curve of the S, so I don't like how close it is to the edge there. It just seems like that's a design failure, but it's not really that big of a deal. So, uh, let's see. This is it, book number one in the Chestnut Springs series, and now I'm curious if there's a playlist in this one, too. Doesn't look like it. Nope, doesn't look like it. Okay, and that's fine. The rules were simple. Keep his hands off his agent's daughter and stay out of trouble. But now he's stuck with her, and there's only one bed. And well, rules are made to be broken. So one bed trope. I don't think I've read anything with that trope, so this would be a first for me. Unless I get to a different book first. 
Rhett Eaton is the face of professional bull riding, the golden boy, or at least he was until it all blew up in his face after a public brawl. Now his agent says he has to clean up his image and sticks Rhett with his ball-busting daughter for the rest of the season as full-time supervision. But Rhett doesn't need a goddamn babysitter, especially one with skin-tight jeans, a sexy smirk, and a mouth she can't stop running. A mouth he can't stop thinking about. And he quickly learns that Summer Hamilton isn't just another conquest. She sees the man behind the mask, and she doesn't run. She pulls him closer, even when she shouldn't. Summer says this means nothing. Rhett says it means everything. She says there are boundaries they shouldn't cross, that Rhett's reputation can't take any more hits, and neither can her damaged heart. Rhett says he's going to steal it anyway. So kind of a Western romance, it sounds like. This next one I've heard a lot about, and so I finally went ahead and got this one, and that is Well Met by Jen DeLuca. And I think the series is also called Well Met, because this is book number one. And this one says, Emily knew there would be strings attached when she relocated to the small town of Willow Creek, Maryland, to help her sister. But who could have anticipated getting roped into volunteering for uh, the local Renaissance Fair? Or that the irritating and inscrutable school teacher in charge of the volunteers would be so annoying that she finds it impossible to stop thinking about him. The fair is Simon's family legacy, and he makes it clear he doesn't have time for Emily's light-hearted approach to life. Her oddball Shakespeare conspiracy theories, or her endless suggestions for new acts to shake things up. Yet, on the fairgrounds, he becomes a different person flirting freely with Emily when she's in her revealing wench's costume. But is this attraction real or just part of the characters they're portraying? This summer was only supposed to be a pit stop for Emily, but now she can't shake the fantasy of calling Willow Creek and Simon home. Yeah. Okay, so this next one, it was the title that got me, and then I think the cover is really pretty. And that is Baby for the Boss Hole. Uh, this one's written by Nadia Lee. It says, My boss is a jerk, but when I discovered him clutching his sausage and more moaning my name, I made a mistake that I can't take back. Emmett Lasker is impossible to work for. He might be model handsome and stupidly wealthy, but he also has it out for me. He's given me more last minute and weekend requests than anyone else, ruining any plans I make. I should quit, and I will, just as soon as I hit my two-year anniversary and earn out my signing bonus. But after a particularly awful day at work, a breakup via text, and my computer crashing, I've had enough. So at 11.59 Friday night, I barge into Emmett's office to tell him what I really think of him. Only that's not what happens at all. There's something about finding your ridiculous, ridiculously hot boss in a compromising position, moaning your name. That can derail a girl's best intentions. And now I'm pregnant. He wants to do the right thing and marry me. Yeah, that's never going to happen. And let's see. Does this have a playlist? I'm curious. Other titles, she's got quite a, the author has quite a few books out there and no playlist, so that's fine. But Baby for the Boss Hole, <laughs> that's what got me. So yeah. Now this next one is book two in a series. This is a, this book is a collection of three mangas. It has been translated from Japanese. I read the first compilation, so the first three mangas in one book. This will follow the next three, so books four, five, and six um, in this one. And that is The Complete Cheese Sweet Home. This one's part number two. We're following this kitten who ends up with the name of Chi, who ends up lost and separated from his mother and siblings, or her. I don't remember if it's a boy or a girl. Anyway, uh, the kitten gets adopted by this family and they cannot, they're not supposed to have a cat or any animals in their apartment, uh, but they do fall in love with the little thing and you're just following the adventures of the cat learns to call them family and 
finds out some more stuff of what it's like to be a cat, what at, what she actually is, and things like that. So it's a really sweet, and it's in graphic novel format. Loved part one, so I'm excited to eventually get to part two, and there are four parts. So, uh, yeah. And that's really all I can say. Okay, so these next two books, as you can see, kind of, but you can see these are stenciled edges. These are like markings of a map. They are the exact same. I mean, the one, you can kind of see a little bit of a color difference. This one's more yellow. This one's more white. Um, but yeah. So these are exclusive ed editions that I got from Once Upon a Book Club in the Romanticy box. There are only two out. I don't think the third one comes out. This is part of a series. Um, the third book is set to be published in 2024. And I'm guessing there's going to be four. And you'll be able to tell from the title. So I'm going to read the synopsis off of my phone for this first book. Uh, came with a letter from the author. Foolish I may be, but I am who I am and I won't apologize for it. So the first book is The North Wind. Look at this just stunning cover. Thrash and the fury of a storm, I find a silver of calm. Uh, the end pages, that's the same design that's on the stenciled edges. And then the chapter headers have uh, thorns there. So... For the lovers and the dreamers. So this one is called The North Wind by Alexandria Warwick. Okay, so I need to read the synopsis on my phone because obviously there's no synopsis on this one. And with looking at Goodreads, this is an adult fantasy romance. It does say this is also a retelling and has mythology in it. So, okay, the synopsis says, lush, dark, romantic. Introducing a newly reimagined tale written in the vein of Beauty and the Beast. I love Beauty and the Beast. And Hades and Persephone. Long before civil civilization, there were the gods. And before the gods, there was the earth, the celestial bodies, and all and air given flesh. They are the en enemoi, mm. the four winds. And they have been banished to the four corners of the world. Wren of Edgewood is no stranger to suffering. Her parents are gone. Survival is all she knows. For 300 years, the land is known as the Grey has been encased in ice. Oh, as long as the Grey has been encased in ice, surrounded by a great barrier called the Shade, which protects the townsfolk from deadlands beyond, from the deadlands beyond. But day by day, the shade weakens. Only one thing can stop the shade's fall. A mortal woman taken captive across the barrier, bound in wedlock to the dark god who reigns over the deadlands. He is the North Wind, the Frost King. An immortal whose heart is said to be as frigid as the land he rules. And the time has come for the Frost King to choose his bride. The North Wind, okay, okay, so this is a standalone, even though it's part of a series. It says this is a standalone, enemies-to-lovers fantasy romance. It is the first in a series, sprinkled with Greek lore, perfect for fans of Jennifer L. Armentrout, Laura Thalass Thalassa, and Scarlett St. Clair. So, can be read as a standalone, uh, but The North Wind, Volume 1. So, I can read the synopsis for this next one. And this next book is The West Wind. Now there is, again, I said the third book is set to come out in 2024, and that is The South Wind. So I'm guessing there will be four books, and we have yet to know anything about, I'm guessing, what it's going to be called The East Wind. So this one is The West Wind. You are free to choose your own path and make your own choices. It has the same um, kind of mappy type of a, design there on the end pages and on this the thing it does come with a letter to the author this one is on a card that says to give up all that you are that is love to choose another's life over your own that is love too 
and this one came with a signed book plate so I've got that in there and this one is leaves on each chapter so okay let's read the synopsis this one does say it has fae again this is a fantasy romance with mythology and a retelling so let's see what the synopsis says for this one since there you can read them as standalones uh Okay, this starts with the same thing about the four winds being banished to the four corners. Okay, here we go. Brielle of Thornbrook has dedicated her life to the Abbey. She spends her days of forging iron and studying the text, all in preparation of becoming an acolyte, a shepherd of the Father. 21 years on this earth and she has never touched a man, and she never will. Yet dark things uncoil beyond Thornbrook's high stone walls. A chance encounter with an alluring stranger leads to Brielle leads Brielle to uncover oh to under leads Brielle to under where the air beneath uh, rot and the roots grow black. Zephyrus bringer of spring with eyes of green. In under those Brielle can trust are few, least of all Zephyrus. But never has a man so thoroughly ensnared her. When faith and heart collide, Brielle learns how quickly threads unravel even her most sacred vow. Thou shalt not forsake the Father, for he is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Four Winds series. Okay, so it continues in this darkly reimagined tale of forbidden love with influence from the Scottish ballad Tam Lynn. Okay, we're on the last four books. I'm going to go with this one on the bottom first because these other ones are kind of similar. So this first one I'm going to tell you about in this last little stack is Things I Wanted to Say by Monica Murphy. And I believe this one's a romance. Uh, let's see. Prologue. There is a playlist. Happy about that. Okay. With Lancat... Oh, wit. Not with. Wit. Wit Lancaster bursts into my life like a storm, dark and thunderous, furious and fierce, cold, heartless, and devastatingly beautiful, like the statues in our prep school gardens. The school with his family name on the sign. He can do no wrong here. This is his domain. He's a menace on campus, adored and feared, hated and respected. His taunting words carve into my skin, shredding me to ribbons. Yet his intense gaze scorches my blood fills me with a longing I don't understand. When he comes to my rescue one night, he ends up broken, bleeding. My instincts, instincts, instincts scream to leave and let him suffer, but I can't. I sneak him into my room, clean him up, fall for his lies. Let him, uh, let him possess every single part of me until I'm the one left a gasping, gasping broken mess. Then he leaves me alone in the dead of night, taking my journal with him. He knows all my secrets, my hate, my truth, and he promises to use my words against me. I'll be ruined if my darkest secret gets out. That's when I strike a bargain with the devil. I will let, I'll let Wit Lancaster ruin me behind closed doors instead. So that sounds like a bully romance. Okay. Now, these next ones are a collection of short stories, all three of these books. Now, this first one is, it says it's a charitable anthology in support of Maui. So 100% of the proceeds of all three of these books, um, all 100% of the proceeds are going to help support uh, Maui with whatever they need from the devastation of the fire there. So... I am happy that 100% of the proceeds are going there and I get a collection of short stories. These are all romance and my understanding is these are all steamy romance short stories. Except I think this one's regular and not short stories. I think this one's just regular ones. So this first one is called Aloha. And I... Oh, it is short stories. It says, Aloha is a charity romance collection of swoon-worthy, never-before-seen short stories from over 50 of your favorite best-selling authors. So there's a lot of short stories in here. This is a chunker. It says, let's see, all with a twist of Hawaii. 
All royalties from the collection will be donated to Maui Food Banks and the Maui Fire Relief Fund to help support the survivors of the devastating fires. And that's why I got this, because I thought, if 100% of the proceeds are going there, absolutely freaking lutely am I going to buy this book. So there are a lot. There's over 700 pages. There is... I don't know how many pages... Like the last book in here, or the last story starts on page 779. Uh, but it's the pages are not numbered, so I don't know exactly how many pages are in this. So obviously there's no synopsis. It's just a collection of short uh, romance uh, stories. But it says authors include K.A. Lindy, Adriana Lockie, Alessandra Tor, Rachel Van Dyken, Willow Winters, and that's, I saw this on Willow Winters' Instagram. She mentioned it in like a reel. Continuing on with the authors, you also have Brittany Cherry, uh, Alethea Romig, Heidi McLaughlin, Crystal Perkins, Helena Hunting, Jessica Ashley, L.B. Dunbar, Ren Alexander, Sky Warren, Tara Brown, Tia Louise, Diana Peter. Froom, Peter Frund, mm -hmm. Jamie K. Schmidt, Alexandria Bishop, Maria Lewis, Casey Metzger, Juliet Kent, Karina Haley, uh, Tre Trelina Pookie, Carly Phillips, <laughs> um, Art Artie V. Ramon, Jill Ramsauer, Amber Kelly, Eric R. Asher, Julie Leto, Lucy Eden, Kimberly Reese, Katie McGee, Lauren Rowe, Pepper Winters, M. Robinson, J. L. Baldwin, Brittany Holland, Angelina M. Lopez, Jiffy Kate, Lex Martin, M. J. Fields, Emma Louise, Catalina Snow, D. Legacy, Legacy, mm. Carrie Hart, Ali Martinez, Liv Morris. Jay McLean, Jana Ash Aston, and Emma Scott. <laughs> the only name that sounds familiar is Willow Winters. So, um, I I got this on Amazon, and when I first looked, it was sold out, and then they got more stock. So I don't know, but if as of when I get to editing this video, if there are more in stock and you are interested in getting a copy and having your proceeds go to help Maui, um, I will have this in the description box, linked in the description box. Um, I may still, even if there's non -avail none available when I look at this, there might be more coming in. I don't know, but either way, I'll link it so that you can check it out and see if maybe you can get it somewhere else, or if you want to keep an eye on it on like Amazon to see when it's going to come back in stock or any of that. So either way, I will link it in the description box. Same thing goes for these next two books. 100% of the proceeds for these also are going to help Maui. Um, and this one is, both of these have the same titles and it's in two volumes, Always in My Heart. And this is volume one, Volume 1 is right here, and Volume 2. So let's look at Volume 1 first. So, and it's the same, same cover. And this is a charity romance collection for Hawaii, and that Volume 1. Now, is this one full-length novels? A collection of full-length novels? Okay, so this one, the pages are numbered. And there's, in volume one, there are 700 and, I take that back, there's 800 pages. So, chapter 15, 6, 17, 18, 18. or is this last one like, This last one might only be a part of the story. I don't know. Anyway. 
So this one says, all proceeds will be donated and we hope you enjoy this collection for the romance romances inside and for the help you're providing uh, outside of these pages. There are two volumes in paperback and ebook form if you would love to snack both for double the love. So you can definitely get these um, on ebook as well. And, oh, and these are full length novels, so these are not short stories. So Aloha, this is a collection of short stories, and these are full length novels. So it says these steamy romances will deliver all the feels while providing aid for Maui. Each is a standalone, so you can binge your way through romance after romance and fall in love again and again. The titles included in Volume 1 are Second Chance by Willow Winters, Wings of a Devil by Luna Pierce, Hold the Forevers by K.A. Lindy, Rider by Par Piper Davenport, Sweet Pea by Jack Davenport, and On the Way Home by Sky Warren. So, that's Volume 1. <clears throat> volume 2, again, 100% of the proceeds for this book went to help Maui. And they're all steamy, five standalone romances. Um, nothing else I can tell you about this one. Let's see, is this one just as long? Yeah, 800 pages. Okay. And these are have different authors than volume one. So that's why I got both volumes, or part of why I got both volumes. So this one includes Bad Boy Player by Kat T. Mason, Quintessentially the One by Alethea Romig, Satin and Pearls by Lauren Landish, Inspired by Jessica Florence, and Finding Dandelion by Lex Martin. So completely different authors and completely different stories in Volume 2 compared to Volume 1. And again, all the proceeds of these last three books are going to help Maui. So I will find these on Amazon. I got mine through Amazon. I did look on the author's website, but they were sold out, but Amazon had them. So I, and I only looked at Willow, Willow Winter's website, but I will at the very least link the Amazon so you can check to see if, if it's available on Amazon and Amazon ships pretty much worldwide as far as I know and so you can definitely see if that's something that you would like so that your purchase can go to help Maui um, or you can look to see the authors that are listed in these these three books to see if you want to go to their personal website or somewhere else to see if the books are available if you don't want to buy through Amazon but I will have these books listed in the description box and again I will try to link I will link these for Amazon if I can, unless Amazon has taken it down, if they're sold out and not getting any more in. Um, so if that happens, obviously I can't link it, but I will try to link these on Amazon so you can look into it a little bit more if you would like. So that's it for this haul. And I think this is my second haul video for September. So I ended up with quite a few more books than I thought I would, uh, but I am happy with all of these. So I am excited. Let me know if you've read from any of these authors. Have you read from any of these books? Uh, what did you acquire in the month of September that you are excited to get to? Talk to me in the comment section below and until next time, stay true to yourself and enjoy a good book and I'll talk to you later.